Greetings in the majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to another service broadcast. I want to share with you in the opening of this broadcast, this live stream, some things that the Lord impressed upon my heart that I've written down to share with you, the body of Christ. Uh, there's a saying that no one wants to address the elephant in the room. And I believe that we need to address, confront uh, the elephant in our nation here in America that is living in a world of humanism, Marxism, uh, abuse of authority, and people not wanting God or the truth to interfere with their lives and daily routines. It seems we have an epidemic, not just that of a virus, but of selfishness, evil, and violence that is ever so increasing in our world today. We just witnessed people storm the capital of the United States. And those in authority did nothing. The few who had authority was overtaken, which is a problem. There is a spirit of lawlessness and violence and social injustice running rampant in our nation that we must address. We all have witnessed this uh, over the past several years um, in our country and it still has not been successfully addressed or dealt with. As believers, uh, I believe that we must be careful with choosing political parties and their agendas which go against the heart, the will, and the order of God Almighty. Some of us have allowed our political beliefs and persuasions to even cause division amongst us who call ourselves Christians. We are clear today more than ever before that there, are, there is definitely two different Americas. There's an America for one group and America for another group of us. There's an old saying that says, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But we are very clear that that is a total lie when it comes to uh, the social injustice as well as um, the, the lawbreakers that we just witnessed whom uh, did not face immediate, immediate repercussions. Uh, let alone uh, force to prevent them from uh, taking over the capital. You know, Jesus told us as believers, citizens of the kingdom of God, to occupy until he returns. Uh, this is an hour that we cannot just talk and pray about what needs to be done. This is an hour that we must stand up and speak out against uh, this spirit of lawlessness that is increasing in our land, evil that is increasing in our land, uh, that the enemy is using people and groups to push an agenda that uh, clearly uh, opposes uh, the kingdom of God. For those of us who call ourselves believers, I want to put, your, put you in to... Um, into remembrance of a very interesting scripture that most people don't like to read and maybe some have not read found in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23 and it says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, 
Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. Have we not done many wonders in your name? And then Jesus says, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Family, when Jesus returns, that should not be the commentary or the judgment that we experience when we have to give an account for our actions here on earth. One of the things that I saw happen this past year, and it was, it was in some respects it was in the news, but it, it was trending in social media and on various websites, uh, Representative Emmanuel Clever, which is a pastor, did the 117th opening prayer for the House of Democrats and in his closing prayer, he said, amen and a woman. Because of this gender inclusion policy, you can no longer say amen. Uh, so he wanted to be inclusive and said, woman, a woman specifically. Now, this was published on the Congress website and it's, it was published on many newspapers uh, where, and I, I, am, I am only repeating what was published on their own website. It says, his decision to gender the word, however, came just days after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, introduced new House rules that would honor all gender identities by eliminating specific terms such as mother and father, son and daughter, and aunt and uncle. Instead, only gender neutral terms such as parent, child, sibling, and parent sibling would be allowed in the text of congressional rules. Calling the rules future focused hear this, in a statement upon their release, Pelosi defended them as the most inclusive in history. Family, America must return to God. America must turn back to God, submit herself to God Almighty. When people refuse to honor God, and follow his wisdoms, his wisdom and, and decisions uh, for a nation, for a people. It causes a divide and opens the door to moral decay, as well as a curse on the land, so that every evil thing will creep in. I don't know about you, I don't know where you live, but if you're awake, uh, I have watched every evil thing creep into our nation over the past 10 months during this pandemic. The arbitrariness of the laws that officials are asked to enforce itself have become a source of lawlessness in contemporary America. The police officer who shot Jacob Blake in the back will not face criminal charges for shooting him seven times in the back as he lays in the hospital right now as I speak, paralyzed. Not to mention George Floyd or Eric Gardner. As God's people, we need to remain firmly against excessive unrighteousness, and unnecessary use of force by law enforcement and hold those who are in office who are here to serve us accountable for their misuse of authority. Top down, from the White House to God's house, there is a fiduciary responsibility for any leader who is called by God and let us not continue to 
prophesy about those who have been called by God who, who, who demonstrate no character or fruits of the Spirit, let alone the Word of God in their life. Let us dare not call them sent from God. Because Scripture says when the righteous are in authority, the people are at peace, the people rejoice. There has not been much rejoicing the past season or two. I don't know about you, but I haven't been rejoicing. The past year shed light on the ongoing racial injustice facing African Americans and other marginalized communities. Reoccurring instances of excessive uh, force, use of force, and, and immediate escalation when engaging the black community must stop. I say to you, and at, 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 at the risk of offending some, but it's just the truth. If there would have been black and brown people seizing the, seizing the, the capital, capital, occupying the, the cap, overtaking the cap, capital, there would have been more than just four or five people's lives taken, 15 people hospitalized. It would be a massacre and it would be written in history. As a pastor, I remain strongly committed to address issues of social injustice and anti-racism and to make meaningful change for uh, both African Americans and all marginalized members of our community, but as a representative of the kingdom of God, as a pastor, as a shepherd, as an apostolic gift, I, I have a spiritual authority to stand flat-footed and speak against injustice. And so I compel you, my, my dear brothers and sisters, those who call themselves God's children, to reassess your political persuasions and beliefs and ideologies in how this country should be ran and return to the instructions of God's word that he has for a nation to abide by so a country can experience peace prosperity, and solidarity for every man, woman, child, boy, and girl. God bless you, and enjoy the service.
As always, at the beginning of every year, we go into fasting and praying to hear the voice of the Lord, uh, receive divine insight and instructions for this year. I want to encourage everyone to go to lift411.org. That's lift411.org for detailed information of special video on fasting and praying this year. I believe that God wants to do something phenomenal in and through our lives as a family of faith, as the body of Christ. So go to lift411.org. There's also a bonus in that video presentation for foods that will benefit your body and boost your immune system. God bless. Ah, praise God. Let's get into the word. Uh, I'm going to pray and we're going to do our confession of faith. We haven't done our confession of faith uh, in a while. And uh, so grab your Bibles, get, grab a pen and a piece of paper, uh, take some notes. I'm telling you, God has something special for you. Father, I thank you and praise you. Hallelujah. For your anointing on my life to minister your word with accuracy as the Holy Spirit ministers through me. I thank you that your people have ears to hear, a heart to receive your word, the will to apply your word to every aspect of our lives. Father, we declare that the will of the Lord is done here in America. We stand under uh, the open heaven of this kingdom and invite you into America. Send forth your mighty angels to carry out your will way and order here in the earth realm send forth the holy ghost to convict the hearts of those in authority to do the right thing in this land and towards your people send forth your anointing on those of us who have kingdom assignments to do a greater work this year than ever before your will be done on earth uh, here as it is in heaven for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Grab your Bibles. Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I believe I have what it says. I believe what it says about my life. It's my road map to God's covenant promises. I believe it to the point that I walk by faith and not by sight. And as a result, my life is made the better for it because I'm a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So devil, you can't touch me. You can't touch my family. I came here on this live stream today to receive something straight from the throne room, fresh manna from on high, just for me in Jesus mighty name. And everybody said amen 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 praise god you all sound great out there i can hear you in the spirit praise god you know family there are so many things 
that fight for our attention and devotion. Our jobs, our kids, uh, some of us, our marriages, some of us, our careers, uh, some of us, money, uh, some of us, uh, our hobbies, uh, sports, politics, and the general demand as well as distractions of life that really, uh, in some respect, causes us to lose sight of what's most important in our lives. And so the question becomes, uh, how many of the things that occupy our time, our energy, again, our thoughts and attention have taken the place uh, where God is supposed to be in our lives. You see, family, whatever you make first is your key to success. I want to talk to you uh, this morning about the principle of first, the principle of first. There are things that we must understand about the principle of first. Uh, and so therefore, God tells us uh, that the beginning of something literally sets the direction of all the rest that will follow. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, the first governs the rest. The first sets up everything else to be blessed. Are you following me? The first represents the totality of what it is that God has entrusted to you and I. And so uh, when we think about uh, the relationship that Moses had with God, when God told Moses to send a group to represent either the nation or a tribe, uh, the first born were always sent to represent the rest, to represent that family. Here, where I'm going with this. Uh, if you turn over to Exodus chapter 13, the Word of God says in Exodus 13, 1 and 2, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel both of man and beast, hear this, it will be mine. Whatever you give birth to first, it will be mine. You dedicate it to me. You, get, you honor me with what I have blessed you to produce. Hear me, family. And so therefore, there's a principle that we need to get here as a family of faith uh, for your family. Uh, some of us, we've missed that season of being able to embrace this principle with our children. But we have to understand with this principle first, the oldest son in a family was to receive an extra portion of the inheritance. Why? Because the firstborn had a responsibility, hear me, to take care of the rest, to take care of the parents when they became old and unable to to take care of themselves. And so the firstborn, hear me, when dedicated to God, that's why we dedicate our children, amen. When a husband and wife, or when a woman gives birth to a child, her first child, uh, from Old Testament and just to new, new modern day principles, listen to me, we're to dedicate that child, uh, that son of, uh, or daughter, to the Lord God Almighty. And as we do that and raise that child up in the love and admonition of God, whatever other siblings are coming next or whatever family members come after that will be blessed as a result of honoring God with the first of your loins, the first of your womb. And so the first of the Ten Commandments state that we should not have no other gods before us. Uh, the Word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 5, uh, eight and nine, and I like what uh, the New Living Translation says. It says, uh, "You must not make for yourselves an idol of any kind, or an image of anything in the heavens, or on earth, or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God." who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. You see, the principle of first is about making sure that God is first in our lives, that God is first in every area 
our lives. He's first before our jobs. He's first before our uh, ambitions in life. He's first before, believe it or not, our family or our marriage. Hear me. You can't place your spouse above God. Uh, and there are so many people, even parents, you can get into uh, uh, making your children out of idols and be give more attention to that child, hear me, or your own personal interests than you give to God. And so therefore, you've made an idol. For example, for example, I hope you're tracking with me. Even your feelings. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be a big one for somebody. Even your feelings can become a God if you allow them to control you. <laughs> Woo! Anger can become a God. Listen to me. Why? Because you, listen, you've, you've allowed an emotion to turn into uh, a, a demonstrous spirit in your life. You see, we need to ask ourselves, am I bowing down to God and his word or to my feelings and emotions? There are so many people who are driven by their feelings and emotions, uh, which are, are literally destroying their lives they're self-destructing why because listen to me they're passionate about their feelings and emotions versus uh having a great great passion for god a passion for the presence of god the anointing of god listen to me that destroys all those yokes of bondage and things that come to try to hurt us hear me and and uh, take away from us and so here's what i want you to understand developing a principle the lord gave me uh, uh some some wisdom nuggets for you today he said developing a discipline and ha or habit helps prevent distractions Listen to me, the more disciplined I am, the, the more, hear me, uh, the, <laughs> the more I go after God, hear me, the more I, I, I uh, water myself with the word, the, the more I stay in the presence of God. I have a discipline of staying in the presence of God. I have a discipline in, in tu tuning into the Holy Ghost, hear me, um, distractions are prevented. So I, I must make God my habit food glory to god are you getting this discipline and diligence hear me family is god's order to keep me faithful fruitful and focus which keeps me from falling falling i'll say that again because you need to get that I'll, uh, discipline and diligence is the order of god which keeps me Faithful, fruitful, and focus to keep me from falling. To, that it keeps me from self-destruction, going off in a way that seems right to me. Why? Because God is prioritized in my life as numero uno. When you prioritize God, in essence, uh, you, 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 you develop this relationship that drives you to uh, learn the importance of practicing God's presence. We practice a lot of things in life, but uh, maybe this is a season for you to get back practicing the presence of God. When you start to practice the presence of God, there's this supernatural anointing that just overtakes your life. Listen to me. And causes a shift in your spirit, man. A shift in your soul. So, so that you can start to see spiritually things that you could not see naturally. Work with me. See, whatever, whatever interferes uh, with your relationship and growth in Christ is an enemy. Some of us right now, some of you watching me right now, uh, you're, you're going to have to figure out, hear me, uh, uh, what it is in your life, what it is that you've allowed in your life to have first place that is actually an enemy to your destiny. It's a distraction to your walk and your relationship with God Almighty. The Word of God says in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things that we're in need of will follow. It'll be added to our lives. Again, there's the order. But listen to me. That, that requires a discipline. It, it, requires, um, it requires you and I... Um, 
developing new habits as believers and maintain them. I don't care if you've been saved for 20, 30 years. Let me share something with you. You can get dull and a spiritual apathy can come over you. Hear me. And, and you become spiritually lazy. And some, some of you right now, listen to me, you need to discipline yourself by saying, you know what, I need to reassess my spiritual life, reassess where I'm at in life, and, and be honest with myself. A am I really, not on an annual basis, not on a monthly basis, but am I really on a day-to-day -day basis seeking first God? Seeking first his righteousness, his will, way, and order of doing things in my life so that I can be the best version of me so that he can add more to my life. He can bless me with those things that he already foreordained for, uh, to bless me with. Uh, listen, I don't want to be the one who causes me, Anthony, to forfeit the blessings of God because I've prioritized everything else. I'm passionate about everything else. Except for God. Say, oh, pastor, I, but I am passionate about God. Uh, listen to me. Are you, are you, is he numero uno? Is God numero uno? Are you following me? <clears throat> you see, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that the key to having God's abundant life, as you know, we, you know, one of our foundational uh, scriptures for uh, this ministry that uh, was founded on Abundant Harvest Christian Center, which Abundant Harvest Lift now, is John 10, 10. The enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so the keys to having uh, God's abundant life, uh, which is his love, his peace, are you following me? His joy is keeping him in his rightful place in every aspect of our lives. I want to share something with you. When he's not in, in, in his rightful place, when we don't allow God into every aspect of our lives, we're not going to experience the blessing, which is love, joy, and peace. Are you following what I'm saying? doesn't mean that you're not going to there be times and seasons where you're not happy. There's a lot of things that happen that we're not happy about. What we're talking about is the true blessing of God. I'm not talking about more money. And that's the problem with some people. You want more money, but you don't want more of God. How about trying more of God, and maybe after more of God, there may just come more money uh, as, uh, are you following what I'm saying, as a, 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 as a benefit, as a, 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 a benefit to chasing after God on a regular basis. Praise God. I love what Genesis chapter 17 says. Verse 1 says in the Amplified, it says, God said to Abram, uh, walk, hear this, I love this, in the Amplified. He says, walk habitually, <laughs> glory to God, before me. And then he says in the Amplified translation, it says, with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence. Woo, glory to God. Did you hear that? Knowing that you are always in my presence. And be blameless and complete in obedience to me. Woo, is that not good? I'm telling you, that is good. That's rich. Notice that God instructed Abraham to be habitual in walking with him and living for him. See, this wasn't a religious thing. This was real. See, we can do this, family, by establishing uh, daily habits of, of prayer and worship and, and, and regular, consistent time spent with God and spent in His Word. Let me share something with you. Everybody listening to me right now, I don't care if it's January, February, June, or November, everybody should be fasting and praying. Listen to me. There's power in fasting and praying. Why? It draws you closer to God and it pushes out anything, listen to me, in your spirit, in your life that is not of God so you can hear the voice of God, get clear direction from God, gain additional insight and strategy for how you're to maneuver, what you're to do so that you can experience the blessing, experience uh, uh, everything that God has for both you and I. You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, maybe, uh, hey, repeat this after me. Lord, help me keep you first. 
Woo, glory to God. Lord, help me be consistent. I can't hear you. I said, what? Lord, help me be consistent. Uh, not somebody else be consistent. Lord, help me be consistent. Lord, help me to walk habitually in your word like Abraham did with integrity. There's a lot of people who know the word, but they're not, they don't have any integrity. Why? The absence of the, the, the absence of the revelation, divine impartation and revelation of the word. And hear me, the power of the Holy Ghost is absent. So there's no conviction when you're doing and saying things that are totally opposite from the character and nature of God. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody just needs to ask the Lord right now, Lord, help me be everything that you created me to be. Help me prioritize you first in every aspect of my life, in every aspect of my family, my, my endeavors uh, in life. Uh, Holy Spirit, help me live in complete and total obedience to the will, way, and order of God. Let me share something with you. Obedience is a choice. Every day, family, we get up, each and every one of us, has a decision to make. Will we be obedient to God? Specifically, are we willing and obedient? If we're willing and obedient, hear me, <clears throat> to the divine instructions of God, then we'll eat the fat of the land. The blessing. But, but see, it requires us to do something. That's why this is a season for you to get, be diligent, disciplined doers of the Word of God. Family, I, I challenge you to put that on your list for this. Lord, I... I Help me be a diligent, disciplined doer of your word so that I can produce the fruit that you have ordained for me to produce in this season. None of me and all of you, Lord. I, I don't know about you. Listen to me. But I'm saying, Anthony's saying, Lord, all of you and none of me. Because if it's all of me and I'm first, then I, I, get, I get the results of placing Anthony first. But if it's all of God, and we place God first, we, we get the results. Listen to me. We set everything else up for the blessing to come behind it. Bless God. Are you guys following me this morning? When we think about this new season, new year, the Hebrew year, five, uh, 5781, uh, according to the Hebrew calendar, which is the year 2021, means widen your mouth in silence. Widen your mouth in silence. Uh, uh, in other words, that your life becomes a sign of worship. God knows the worship of our hearts. See, uh, no matter what we say, God knows our hearts. God knows if our heart is bent towards him. I, I was before the Lord the other day and I said, Lord, I don't want to do things religiously or because I've developed a systematic way of, of, uh, of exercising my faith that I'm Unconscious, unconsciously I'm disconnected from you and my heart isn't bent, bent towards you but I'm doing all the things that look right and sound right Woo! are you hearing me I, I'm telling this is the conversation that I had with me and me, me and the Lord I, I, I don't want that to be me I, I don't want to I don't want to be the individual tricking me it's one thing for the devil to trick you but it's another thing for you to trick yourself by not being honest with yourself and where you are with God. I, I hope this is helping somebody. And so when we, we understand prophetically what, 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 what that number means, this season means, and uh, listen to me, it, it, as you are silent in battles, here's what it means, hear me, going a little deeper. As you're silent in battles, in the natural, the worship that comes forth, in time spent with God will be our weapon and God will restore, deliver, and give us victory in areas that we haven't experienced before. Is there anybody out there that wants to experience some new victories this year that you didn't experience in the past uh, year, the past season? Is there anybody this year, listen to me, you want to be delivered from some things that you, you, you came to, you, you know, you... you, you you got honest with yourself and say, you know, I'm not quite delivered from that. Lord, help me. Holy Ghost, he, he, de, he, deliver me from this. 
Show me how to break this spirit. Show me how to break that behavior. Show me, hear me, how to take on your image and likeness and be the, uh, the true version of myself that you ordained for me to be. I don't want to keep trying to be me. I want to be the, verse, the best version of me. Are you getting this? I can't hear you. Can I get an amen? Are you with me, family? And, and so, uh, you know, I, everything that the devil has, so this is for somebody, everything that the devil has stole from you, I touch and agree with you right now, it will be restored. Whether it's years, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, hear me, your relationship, I, I declare that the enemy will have to pay it back seven times seven, bless God. Do you receive this? Praise God. Every, everything that wasted your time and, and you, were, you were purposing to do the right thing, but the enemy got in and messed up some stuff. I declare, listen to me, God, God's going to give you that time back. Why? Because of your faithfulness and your heart for him. Praise God. When we look at this, this year, the strong concordance shows the number 2021 uh, to, to, to mean the, the word Hostin, Hotson, uh, H-O-T-S-E-N. And it means a weapon of war. This is a year for worship like never before. Worship will become our weapon like never before. Worship must become your lifestyle. You, you can't, worship cannot be your lifestyle absent from God because it's all about God. It's all about getting into the presence of God. Come on, more of God. See, you got to up the ante this year, bless God. You got to spend more time with God. I'm telling you, the more time we'll spend with God, I'm telling you, the, the, the more, listen to me, God is going to show us some divine things. He's, he's going to reveal some things to us. Some things will be released in dreams. Some things will be released in vision. Some, some things will be released to you in moments while you're driving and the Lord will just, the Holy Ghost just put it in your spirit. This is what you need to do. I told my wife uh, the other day, I said, listen to me, <clears throat> we, we need to be clear on our list of things that, that, that uh, 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 we're, we're looking for. Uh, for God to do in and through our lives and uh, in this, this new year, in this new season, this new chapter of our lives so that we can be in total agreement so that God can manifest himself, hear me, in some areas of our lives that we haven't experienced just yet. Oh yeah, that's me, the pastor. I'm being very transparent with you. Now, let me switch reels and say this to you. Uh, giving and tithing is a form of honoring and worshiping God. I'll say it again. Giving and tithing is a form of honor and worship of God. The principle of tithing, family, if, if, you, if you look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, is that of first fruits. And so therefore they go, they go hand in hand. Proverbs 3, 9, uh, uh, it, it talks about where the Israelites were commanded to honor the Lord, uh, their God, with their wealth, with the first fruits of their crops. Amen. And so they had land. Hear me. And so with that land and everything that God gave to them, blessed them with, they were willing to honor God with the first of the harvest. Glory to God. Are you, are you guys getting this? <clears throat> and so most people, though, they don't totally understand what first fruits is really about. And there's those that are religious that thinks that, hey, you know, somebody's trying to get something out of me. Nobody's trying to get anything out of you. Listen to me. I'm trying to get something to you. Glory to God. And so the question will be for some, well, what exactly is first fruits? Well, let me break it down for you. God declares, let's go back to the Old Testament. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10, in the NIV, it says, When you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf 
of the first fruits of your harvest to the priests. Okay, let's, let's word it a little different. Modern day. When you come into the place, the place, the city, the job, the business, whatever it is that I've anointed you to birth, doors I've opened up for you to walk into, come on, hear me. Watch this. Scripture says, when you come into the land which I give you and reap its harvest, when you receive that paycheck, when you receive the blessing from whatever that place or source is, he says, then you shall bring, not before, then you shall bring me a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, to the man or woman of God. Hear me. It's a way of honoring God. Lord, you've blessed me this new year. You've blessed me this past year. And so coming into a new year, I want to set up the next, uh, listen to me, the next 11 months. Wherever you're at, starting wherever you're at, coming into, uh, watch this, June. I want to set up the next six months, whatever it is, listen to me, to be blessed by what I do first, by placing you first, honoring you first in everything that you've blessed me with. And so we have to understand the divine establishment of God's order is actually the root, the foundation that governs the rest of everything that we have. Romans chapter 11, fast forwarding uh, to the New Testament, uh, verse 16 in the New King James, it says, for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so the branches are holy. Praise God. Did, did you get that? <clears throat> See, whatever I prioritize first, whatever I honor God with first, listen to me, sets up everything else for the blessing. Praise God. The first represents the totality of everything. In other words, uh, whatever you do with the first, it governs what happens to the rest. Whatever you do with your first child kind of governs what happens with the, the rest of the children. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? And, and so again, starting from wherever you're at. Uh, listen to me. Again, we, we might have missed that season of our life. But you can start right today and go, Lord, I'm going to honor you. <laughs> Glory to God, with, with, with my first fruits at every turn, in everything, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to honor you. I, I, you're going to get glory out of my life like never before. And so by presenting all first to God during the first month of the year, you are establishing his redeeming covenant, covenant uh, for everything that you do. All first family belongs to God. Everything that he blesses us with belongs to him. Amen. We should honor him. Should be, it, it should be no dick big deal about us giving to God. We're just saying, Lord, thank you for blessing me. Whether it's the tithe, whether it's an offering, whatever. Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for raising up somebody else to bless me. So just as I've been a blessing, oh, you're honoring your word to make sure that you raise up somebody else to bless me. As I open a door, you raise up somebody else to open a door. <clears throat> as you bless me, I'm going to honor you with the blessing. Praise God. And so Proverbs, when we look at verse 9 as well as 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your increase, of all your increase. So your barns will be filled. So that your bank account, we don't have no barns. Some of you might have barns though. Uh, but your bank account, amen, will be filled with plenty. And your fats overflowing. Your cupboards, everything. I don't know about you. I like overflow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You get a little taste of some overflow, I'm telling you, it make you go, how do I get some more overflow? Guess what? Keep honoring God. What? You just keep honoring God, being obedient to God, to the word of God, to the will of God, to the way of God. Come on, placing God first. I'm going to share something with you. You're going to experience the overflow. <laughs> Woo, that's a word right there. Obedience, that's a hashtag. Obedience causes the overflow. Amen. 
And so again, I want you to be clear, who gets the benefit? You and I get the benefit from honoring God, amen? And so therefore, Father, I just thank you, pray. I declare, hallelujah, that your, that, 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 that your children's worship will be a weapon against the attacks of the enemy. I declare that your worship will shift uh, uh, our atmosphere, our households, our economy. I proclaim that every act of worship will bring about peace and uh, uh, prosperity and abundance in this new year, in this new season. Father, I thank you and praise you, hallelujah, that that abundance will be both spiritually, mentally, physically, socially. We will economically, <clears throat> we'll experience this year the overflow in the face of a worldwide pandemic. Father, I thank you, hallelujah, that it all belongs to you. And so when we honor you, hallelujah, our hearts are bent and set towards honoring you, hallelujah, you'll honor us. Amen. Uh, your word will manifest in every aspect of our lives. And so, uh, family, it all simply begins with honoring God, with his first fruits as in, instructed in his word. And so I, I declare that your obedience to honoring God will cause your barns to be filled, your bank account to be filled uh, with plenty. Listen to me, your household, your life to be filled with love, joy, and peace. Everything isn't just money. Hear me, praise God. Some of you have all the money in the world. <clears throat> I had a time in my life, I had a whole lot of money and was unhappy. So you can have a bunch of money, amen? It doesn't mean that you're going to be happy, praise God. So you may need something else. And so, I, I, again, I, I just declare that your obedience is going to cause the overflow. Your worship, hallelujah, is going to become uh, your weapon this year like never before in Jesus' mighty name. And so... Uh, with that, listen to me. I want to encourage you to put God first in every area of your life by doing these three or four things. Number one, prayer. Praise God. Give God your, your first in the morning. Give it to him at the close of the day. Amen. Uh, uh, planning. Ask God for divine insight and strategy in this new year. You see, where do you want to be at six months from now? Where do you want to be at? Listen to me. Going at, at the end of this season, going into the next season. Talk to God about it. Write it down. Make it clear. And then prepare an offering. Bless God. Again, when you give your, your first fruits, when you honor God with your first blessing of the season, uh, you're, you're literally planting a seed for the remainder of the year. The first, again, sets everything else for the blessing. When you prioritize God in your life, it sets up everything else for the blessing. Why? It's the principle of the first. And so there's a, a, a greater portion that awaits both you and I as we honor God at every turn of our life. So I want to encourage you, before the month is out, to honor God with your first fruit. Amen? Operate in the law, in the principle of first, and watch what God does. God bless you. I'm out of time. I thank you for yours. My God, I hope that you have received a word fitly spoken in due season for your life, for your kingdom assignment, for your family, for your household, Whatever it is that God has called you to do in this hour, I declare that through your obedience and your worship, you're going to see a breakout this year like never before. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if you're watching me right now uh, and you say, wow, okay, I got it. I got it. Listen to me. I got to prioritize God. I want to make God first in my life. Family, what a better time to do it than right now. Right now. So you know what, Lord? I want to place you first. So whether you know God or not, if you don't know God, this is an opportune time for you to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is an opportune time for, for you to factor God back into your life. And so therefore, I want to give you an opportunity to set yourself up to be blessed spiritually, physically, economically, socially, as a result of placing God first in your life, receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life.
So if you're watching me right now and you say, yes, that's me, repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, today I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart and take up residency. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you that you died for me and you were raised from the dead and you sit at the right hand of the Father and there I sit with you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for my new life in Christ. Amen. God bless you and welcome to the family of faith. Well, family, uh, that's it. That's all. On behalf of Dr. Micheline, uh, I'd like to say uh, we love you. Praise God. And thank God for you. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And I'm looking forward to seeing what God is going to do in your life this new year and this new season, new chapter of your life. Whether, that, whether you're listening to this message in January, June, November, bless God. Whenever you listen to this message, I pray that as a result of you placing God first in your life, like for real, you're going to experience a newness that you've never experienced before. You're going you're to experience a dimension of, of, of God our Father like you never have before. And you're going to be blessed, I'm telling you. God bless you. Until the next time, as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Abundant Harvest Lips Church is committed to broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing a kingdom message that actively demonstrates the love of Christ around the world. Through your financial support of the work of the ministry, you share equally with us in the many testimonies of the goodness of God that we receive throughout the year. You can give your tithes and offerings on our website, lift411.org, or send your donation to P.O. Box 6249, Altadena, California, 91001. Your tax-deductible donation helps build the kingdom and keeps pointing people to Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, thank you for putting the anointings over my ministry, Father, to get yeah. the message. Yeah, so no why. Man, how many of y'all know somebody out there that's just moving a buck fifty in the wrong direction? Man, just lead them back to Yahweh. Bless. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Yahweh. Uh, yeah, uh. I see the path you want, don't look like it's gonna last too long. You could pass a bomb, you really good at basketball. Other brothers in the hood is not as half as strong with them, the magic on. You got more than enough, pass it on. Cash involved, it's inevitable to fall. You want to ball, live larger than King Kong Taking extreme losses, now you want to be cautious You was born to lead, Holy Trinity needs bosses Feed the market, breed fathers and street profits See the option, now you gotta seal the pocket Don't let fear stop you, too many of our peers Dropping from that same block, popping the enemy plotting For your failure, took a lot of faith for me to tell you Not worshiping bezels, putting devils on the pedestal Gotta make you brand new, looking with a better view Making the man of you was what's ahead of you true Doing the buck 50 on the highway Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Doing the buck 50 on the highway Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Who? Yahweh, Yahweh Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Who? Yahweh, Yahweh Now it's time to start listening uh, living like a fast girl, now you getting passed along A part of that world, not used to having cash at all Now you getting desperate, walking around aggressive Choosing a method of using your body as an investment Abusing it now, but your mind is too powerful Walking around open for blindness to devour you Once you start hiding, nobody will try to marry you Realize it before your mind's crying at your burial You deserve better than that you a true queen, only revealing the facts to make it routine. Keep Yahweh in your vision, start living your dream. Not far away from what's already given to you to succeed. Enemy is crafty, ready to close your chapter in the misleading fashion, disobedient to the master. You got too many qualities, it's beautiful for you to walk around and let the devil make a fool of you. True, doing the buck 50 on the highway. Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh. Doing the buck 50 on the highway. Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh. Who? Yahweh. Yahweh. Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh. Who? 
Yahweh, Yahweh. Ah, uh, yeah. The moon's dark and in the end time is really near. Talking about it means nothing when it's your biggest fear. Rumors of war, earthquakes in various places are quaking to be destroyed. Falling to great nations. Many will deceive you in the name of the Savior. Another plot that'll lead you to constant danger Can't afford to walk this earth's surface sleepwalking Have you believe you gon' suffer some extreme losses? Satan looking for new recruits for his empire To do his dirty work and then toss him back to the fire Sleep on it because the picture isn't clear enough Body leaking from it and result of you get in touch You could have everlasting life if you really want it Trust in Christ and receive it in more abundance Simple as that that, that. Had to give it on the highway Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Doing the buck 50 on the highway Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Who? Yahweh Yahweh Now it's time to start listening to Yahweh Who? Yahweh Yahweh Yeah